Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In case you're new here, my name is Kim. This is Core Union. Today I wanted to read chapter one of Feeling is the Secret by Neville Goddard. I am being totally guided to do this for you guys, which from, from my perspective means that there are many of you guys watching this video that need to hear this, okay? So allow these words to kind of permeate your being, become one with them and read it on your own or listen to the audiobook. I prefer listening to audiobook myself. But anyway, I'm just gonna read this and whatever comes out after will come out. And I hope that this video helps you guys. Before I get into this, please do like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel if you love my content. And if you want me to be your coach in learning how to manifest your specific person back or money or a success in your business, job, promotion, whatever it is, it doesn't matter, email me at kim .com. I will reply back with my next available session only after you've booked on my website, coreunion.com. And you can book a 30-minute session, a 60-minute session, or a package. The packages just makes it much more affordable to have multiple sessions with me. I'm just going to dive right into this. You guys know I'm kind of like a no-nonsense kind of coach. Chapter one, <laughs> Feeling is the Secret, Law and Its Operation by Neville Goddard, read by your favorite coach, Kim. Okay. The world and all within it is man's conditioned consciousness objectified. Consciousness is the cause as well as the substance of the entire world. So it is to consciousness that we must turn if we would discover the secret of creation. Knowledge of the law of consciousness and the method of operating this law will enable you to accomplish all you desire in life. Armed with a working knowledge of this law, you can build and maintain an ideal world. Consciousness is the one and only reality not figuratively, but actually. This reality may for the sake of clarity be likened unto a stream which is divided into two parts, the conscious and the subconscious. In order to intelligently operate the law of consciousness, it is necessary to understand the relationship between the conscious and the subconscious. The conscious is personal and selective. The subconscious is impersonal and non-selective. The conscious is the realm of effect. The subconscious is the realm of cause. These two aspects are the male and female divisions of consciousness. The conscious is male. The subconscious is female. The conscious generates ideas and impresses these ideas on the subconscious. The subconscious receives ideas and gives form and expression to them. By this law, first conceiving an idea and then impressing the idea conceived on the subconscious, all things evolve out of consciousness. And without the sequence, there is not anything made that is made. The conscious impresses the subconscious while the subconscious expresses all that is impressed upon it. The subconscious does not originate ideas, but accepts as true those which the conscious mind feels to be true and in a way known only to itself objectifies the accepted ideas. Therefore, through his power to imagine and feel his freedom to choose the idea he will entertain, man or woman has control over creation. Control of the subconscious is accomplished through control of your ideas and feelings. The mechanism of creation is hidden in the very depth of the subconscious, the female aspect or womb of creation. The subconscious transcends reason and is independent of induction. It contemplates a feeling as a fact existing within itself and on this assumption proceeds to give expression to it. The creative process begins with an idea and its cycle runs its course as a feeling and ends in a volition to act. Ideas are impressed on the subconscious through the medium of feeling. 
No idea can be impressed on the subconscious until it is felt. But once felt, be it good, bad, or indifferent, it must be expressed. Feeling is the one and only medium through which ideas are conveyed to the subconscious. Therefore, the man who does not control his feeling may easily impress the subconscious with undesirable states. By control of feeling is not meant restraint or suppression of your feeling, but rather the disciplining of self to imagine and entertain only such feeling as contributes to your happiness. Control of your feeling is all important to a full and happy life. Never entertain an undesirable feeling, nor think sympathetically about wrong in any shape or form. Do not dwell on the imperfection of yourself or others. To do so is to impress the subconscious with these limitations. What you do not want done unto you, do not feel that it is done unto you or another. This is the whole law of a full and happy life. Everything else is commentary. Every feeling makes a subconscious impression. And unless it is counteracted by a more powerful feeling of an opposite nature must be expressed. The dominant of two feelings is the one expressed. I am healthy is a stronger feeling than I will be healthy. To feel I will be is to confess I am not. I am is stronger than I am not. What you feel you are always dominates what you feel you would like to be. Therefore, to be realized, the wish must be felt as a state that is rather than a state that it is not. Sensation precedes manifestation and is the foundation upon which all manifestation rests. Be careful of your moods and feelings, for there is an unbroken connection between your feelings and your visible world. Your body is an emotional filter and bears the unmistakable marks of your prevalent emotions. Emotional disturbances, especially suppressed emotions, are the causes of all disease. To feel intensely about a wrong without voicing or expressing that feeling is the beginning of disease. Dis-ease in both body and environment. Do not entertain the feeling of regret or failure for frustration or detachment from your objective results in disease. Think feelingly of the state you desire to realize. Feeling the reality of the state sought and living and acting on that conviction is the way of all seeming miracles. All changes of expression are brought about through a change of feeling. A change of feeling is a change of destiny. All creation occurs in the domain of the subconscious. What you must acquire, then, is a reflective control of the operation of the subconscious, that is, control of your ideas and feelings. Chance or accident is not responsible for the things that happen to you, nor is predestined fate the author of your fortune or misfortune. Your subconscious impressions determine the conditions of your world. The subconscious is not selective. It is impersonal and no respecter of persons. The subconscious is not concerned with the truth or falsity of your feeling. It always accepts as true that which you feel to be true. Feeling is the ascent of the subconscious to the truth of that which is declared to be true. Because of this quality of the subconscious, there is nothing impossible to man or woman. Whatever the mind of man or woman can conceive and feel as true, the subconscious can and must objectify. Your feelings create the pattern from which your world is fashioned, and a change of feeling is a change of pattern. The subconscious never fails to express that which has been impressed upon it. The moment it receives an impression, it begins to work out the ways of its expression. It accepts the feeling impressed, excuse me, it accepts the feeling impressed upon it, your feeling as a fact existing within itself, and immediately sets about to produce in the outer or objective world the exact likeness of that feeling. The subconscious never alters the accepted beliefs of man. It outpictures them to the last detail whether or not they are beneficial. 
To impress the subconscious with this desirable state, you must assume the feeling that would be yours had you already realized your wish. In defining your objective, you must be concerned only with the objective itself. The manner or of expression or the difficulties involved are not to be considered by you. To think feelingly on a state impressed it on the subconscious. Therefore, if you dwell on difficulties, barriers, or delay, the sub Conscious, by its very non-selective nature, accepts the feelings of difficulties and obstacles as your request and proceeds to produce them in your outer world. The subconscious is the womb of creation. It receives the, un excuse me, it receives the idea unto itself through the feelings of man. It never changes the idea received, but always gives it form. Hence, the subconscious outpictures the idea in the image and likeness of the feeling received. To feel a state of hopelessness or impossible is to impress the subconscious with the idea of failure. Although the subconscious faithfully serves man, it must not be inferred that the relation is that of a servant to a master, as was anciently conceived. The ancient prophets called it the slave and servant of man. St. Paul personified it as a woman and said, the woman should be subject to man in everything. The subconscious does serve man and faithfully gives form to his feelings. However, the subconscious has a distinct distaste for compulsion and responds to persuasion rather to command. Consequently, it resembles the beloved wife more than the servant. The husband is head of the wife. May not be true of man and woman in their earthly relationship, but it is true of the conscious and the subconscious or the male and female aspects of consciousness. The mystery to which Paul referred when he wrote, this is a great mystery. He that loveth his wife loveth himself and they too shall be one flesh is simply the mystery of consciousness. Consciousness is really one and undivided, but for creation's sake, it appears to be divided into two. The conscious objective or male aspect truly is the head and dominates the sub oh my goodness, and dominates the subconscious subjective or female aspect. However, this relationship is not that of the tyrant, but of the lover. So by assuming the feeling that would be yours, were you already in possession of your objective. The subconscious is moved to build the exact likeness of your assumption. Your desires are not subconsciously accepted until you assume the feeling of their reality. For only through feeling is an idea subconsciously accepted and only through the subconscious acceptance is ever expressed. It is easier to ascribe your feeling to events in the world than to admit that the conditions of the world reflect your feeling. However, it is eternally true that the outside mirrors the inside, as within, so without. A man can receive nothing unless it is given him from heaven. And the kingdom of heaven is within you. Nothing comes from without. All things come from within, from the subconscious. It is impossible for you to see other than the contents of your consciousness. Your world in its every detail is your consciousness objectified? Objective states bear witness of subconscious impressions. A change of impression results in a change of expression. The subconscious accepts as true that which you feel as true. And because creation is the result of subconscious impressions, you, by your feeling, determine creation. You are already that which you want to be. And your refusal to believe this is the only reason you do not see it. To seek on the outside for that which you do not feel you are is to seek in vain. For we never find that which we want. We find only that which we are. In short, you express and have only that which you are conscious of being or possessing. To him that hath it is given. Denying the evidence of the senses and appropriating the feeling of the wish fulfilled is the way to realization of your desire. Mastery of self-control of your thoughts and feelings is your highest achievement. 
However, until perfect self-control is attained so that in spite of appearances, you feel all that you want to feel, use sleep and prayer to aid you in realizing your desired states. These are the two gateways into the subconscious. Okay. I do want to add a couple things. I don't want you guys to worry if you're not able to feel being in the state of being fully loved, adored, and cherished because of the things that happen in your 3D reality with your person or different circumstances and events that you experienced. If you're having a hard time feeling into it and you still feel sad or agitated or angry, or if you're not being treated the way you deserve to be treated, say by your boss or your coworkers or your employees, or basically anyone in your reality, not getting the money that you want and all this stuff. And if you're feeling a sense of insecurity or feeling unsafe, angry, or frustrated, don't let those words in any way sway you into thinking that you're not going to be able to achieve what it is that you desire, or what it is that you want, because it is truly already done or you wouldn't have the desire to begin with. Your desire already desires you, or you wouldn't desire it in the first place. So I promise you, if you would just drop some of the habits that you have of constantly wondering, thinking, checking your 3D for evidence, and constantly being aware that something hasn't fully solidified yet, if you would just drop those habits and stay completely persisting in your inner world and just stay in your happy little bubble, create the life that you want in your happy little bubble and stay there and don't let anything burst your bubble. Okay. Don't talk about it with anybody in your reality only because it most likely will end up triggering you because something may be reflected back to you that is still active within you. You wouldn't be reactive or triggered by something unless somehow, some way, there's a little bit of something still left over that might be something that you are afraid of. So it's not a big deal. It just means that your emotional filter, your body, is still has a little bit of an active something in the subconscious or conscious that you just need to release and let go of. I have explained on many videos before that when we get triggered by things in our reality, when you are not deeply triggered, it is not that big of a deal. Like you're not going to spiral out of control. You just suddenly got a sudden thought or you saw something or you heard something and it had some sort of a, it made a connection in your mind of, of things that were painful, say with your specific person. When it's not a deep trigger, I want you to just remind yourself of the process, step back from it, observe it, release it, let it go, and get back in alignment with your end. Get back in alignment on your mental diet. If it is a deep trigger when it comes to anything related to money or your specific person, but of course, most of you guys, you're looking for help and coaching on specific person related matters. Remind you, it's all the same because it's all your reality is all of your consciousness, which is both your conscious and subconscious mind, just being animated for you. It's all being personified for you. But if you're deeply triggered and if it's related to, say, your specific person, and it's not just something that you can easily just shift your thinking and go back into alignment with your mental diet, I want you to have a goal to get back on your mental diet as soon as possible. But that doesn't mean that if you are feeling bad or feeling hurt, if you're not able to get back in the swing of it, even for a week, you're okay. It's not a big deal. Nothing has happened. Nothing has ruined it. You haven't ruined it. You should express your anger and your frustration, not at your person in a re reactive, immature way, but in some sort of a cathartic, healthy way. So you have a deep trigger, you're angry, you're frustrated, never, ever, ever suppress your emotions. That is the beginning of dis-ease, okay? But detach it from your person. That's all you need to do. Just detach it from your person. Your person mirrored something back at you that you have to look at. 
Because if you don't look at it, then you can't actually have the relationship that you want and deserve because your ego is trying to stop you from having it. Your ego is just trying to stop you because of wounds that you have in your past. And it's trying to say, no, we're not going to allow you to get hurt again. So those are your barriers. Those are your blocks. Okay. It's really that simple. So detach it from your person. Get really clear of who your person is, all of the qualities that you love about them. Okay. And keep them in a nice and safe place. And then nurture yourself. If you need to cry, get it out and cry. Cry in a pillow. If you need to shout in your pillow, go ahead. If you need to throw your pillow, go ahead. If you need to work out and get the frustration out, please do it. Don't hold it in because you will become a, it'll, it's like you're going to become a pressure cooker and you're going to get very, very, very highly reactive with everything in your reality. And then, you know, you're going to end up probably experiencing a lot of things that you don't like. So nurture yourself, take care of yourself, express the emotion, but please make it very clear that this has nothing to do with your person. Okay. It's as simple as that. And if you have an awareness, you know, I feel like when they did this or that, that reminded me of something that happened with my mother, my father, this person, that person, this ex, that relationship, whatever it is, if it's one at a time, when you are triggered, take care of yourself, nurture yourself, let yourself know how perfect you are in everything you say, everything that you do, how worthy you are, how deserving you are, how loved you are, how safe and secure you are. And also, if, if you're aware of who it was that harmed you, let them come in, say what you have to say to them, express it to them. It's safe to express it to them and let them beg you for forgiveness. Let them come to you in a, in a strong way though, not don't have them in a bad state in a strong way, have them come to you with complete vulnerability in their highest and best and have them come to you and say how deeply, incredibly sorry they are and how you deserved more. Revise, revise a situation from your past, from your childhood and have whomever it was show up for you in the way that you needed them to back then. And then also let that little part of you, because the little part of you, even though you're an adult and you're aware that things weren't your fault on a subconscious level, when we're children, we disassociate and we take all of the blame on because if we put the blame on the people who we depend on to love us and to care for us, and if they become bad in our eyes, we've really put ourselves in a very risky position. So on a subconscious level, we just, we end up taking the blame. Like there must be something wrong with me. I must be, something is wrong with me for them to be doing this to me, for them to be ignoring me or abandoning me or rejecting me or talking like this to me. It is me. There's something wrong with me. And that is just a normal, it's, it's what we all do. It's part of being human. Okay. But, and I'm not a therapist, I'm not a psychologist. And I, I just, I know this from just kind of living and learning. When I've done this, I've healed my inner, my dark, my shadow, my inner child stuff, and it is reflective and it helps. And it has made everything with me and my Marisol Hana solidified and strong and deep while I am doing the work and Hannah's doing the work and together we're doing it together. I don't need to do it alone anymore. I don't need to be perfectly healed to be in love and in a relationship with him. Okay. So that's how you handle a deep trigger. Okay. Nobody ever said on this channel that, and I'm only reacting to somebody who made a comment recently, by the way, somebody had made a comment, something, and I want to address that without putting them on the spot. I have never said in any of my videos to suppress your feelings and just to ignore. I do say ignore current circumstances in the way that, in other words, disregard appearances, ignore what's happening in a way that it doesn't matter. It will all shift and change because your reality is malleable and your reality will show itself and show the change to you when you've made the inner change and the inner shift. Okay. So anyway. I love you guys so much. I hope that this video helped. Comment down below that you know and you understand and you are going to stay faithful to your kingdom of heaven and you are going to make a promise to yourself that you are going to affirm that you are more and more strong 
in every way, every day, and that you understand how manifestation works and that you know that you are creating your entire life and your reality and you are going to stay faithful to your end. I love you guys so much. Have an amazing day and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Nothing can come. Nothing can come.